Welcome to another episode of P's and Q's of Letterpress. I'm here again with the Heidelberg Windmill, and we're going to pick up where we left off with commercial registration. Um, I had a few people asking me about um, how I actually run the envelopes. So today we're going to just kind of walk you through it real quick. Okay, the first thing we need to do is talk about the chase. I'm going to have my assistant please bring me a chase. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so taking a look at the chase, you're going to notice that on all windmill chases, there's a small notch here on the side. Um, this notch is intended to indicate a rough center line. Um, and that's important because when you run an envelope, you're going to set the envelope up on the feed table on center. Uh, the gripper will grab it and pull it in, and the idea is to kind of make the artwork and the envelope align here on center as it travels in. Envelopes. Um, we do this often when we're doing a simple return address. Uh, reason being, uh, on an envelope, when the printing is completed and the flap is folded, uh, the horizontal and vertical registration, um, if it's slightly off one way or the other, um, because of the sort of oddity of the flap, it makes it very difficult to be able to actually know or recognize if something isn't quite identical from envelope to envelope. Not to mention the fact that envelopes are such a highly disposable object. Okay, we're here with an envelope, a ruler, pencil, some scotch tape, and a return address plate. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take our pencil, we're going to mark the top. We're then going to take the ruler, measure across, find a center line, Mark that as well. Strike our line. Oops. Next, we're going to plan to set the address approximately three quarters of an inch down. Let's get that as close as we can by measuring down from the fold three quarters of an inch and making a mark. There we go. So now what we have is our center line and we have the first line should land approximately there, three quarters of an inch down. You take your plate. Set your plate up, visibly on the center, and you can do this by simply taking the bottom line, widest point of the text, setting it up so it just touches both sides of the flap, which should be approximate center, sliding it up evenly. Okay. Now lastly, what we'll do is we're going to hold our plate in place, take a piece of scotch tape, just barely overlap the plate on both sides. And we now have our artwork positioned on the envelope. All right, so we're here on press. I've got a base locked up. I've got my envelope here centered according to the point of the flap with the slot here on the table, as well as the dot on the back of the fence. The chase is currently set up uh, sort of centered in the chase, as well as a slight gap to the right side, approximately a finger's width of a gap just in this area here. You may need to slide left or right slightly, um, and by leaving that gap, you're just doing yourself the favor of being able to go that direction. So let's start the press up. Got my suckers all adjusted. And let's go ahead and just grab the envelope. We're just gonna go ahead and grab the envelope, nothing more. And stop, okay? At this point, we're gonna shut the press off, turn the impression on, re-engage, roll the envelope. And advance the press. Now in doing so, what you're doing is adhering the plate, obviously, to the base, okay? And just as you see that the press is ready to open up, what I like to do is I reach my hand over, force the knuckle open, which then actually is a manual advance to release the grip. This is going to leave the envelope and the plate in place. There you go. You can see if you can, can't really see it quite yet. Let's see if we can get a view of it. There you go. The rollers are just going to pass by momentarily. There we go. Okay. Now we can go ahead and just gently remove the envelope and then slide our scotch tape out ever so slightly. Now what we have is our artwork centered on the chase and aligned to our envelope um, in an approximate area. Okay, we're here on the press. We're gonna go do a pull real quick and just take a look. There we go. Shut the press off so we can 
take a look quietly. All right. Top down. It's pretty much spot on, three quarters of an inch. Our side to side, I'm measuring inch and a half plus a 32nd. Opposite sides also an inch and a half plus a 32nd. And then we're going to go ahead and just get a general idea how square we are on the sheet. Here I'm measuring in at 187 and 187. So in terms of running in a commercial mode, that is the essential ideal placement. And that is more or less what someone will be shooting for. Let's see if I can get a little close on this too. There we go. Very simple, very quick. So we just walked through setting up the envelopes to run them through the press. Um, we happened to get lucky and our registration came out pretty precise on our first try. Um, however, uh, you may occasionally need to position the artwork or move the envelope that is. Uh, it just depends on which way you're trying to move. If you need to go left or right, then you would adjust your table position, left or right. Um, if you need to move up or down on the envelope, then you would move the, the actual base forward or back. Okay. Lastly, let's just imagine that the address is slightly crooked one way or the other. Then what you can do is you get into your fence adjustments. Your fence adjustments are going to be down at the bottom. Uh, and essentially what you're going to want to do is there's two flathead adjuster screws. One's a push and one's going to be a stop. It just depends on which direction you want to go. And then you're just going to apply your uh, uh, needs to your uh, parallel paper marking. So that's how we run envelopes in commercial mode. Um, there's certainly a few other objects that you can run in this setting that we do often, which would be things like coasters and coffee sleeves. Um, we've also done a lot of grocery bags this way, believe it or not. Uh, depending on the object that you're running, the weight of the object, the shape of the object, the only real difference to consider is whether or not you may need to run suckers or something along those lines. If you're not familiar with suckers, we can certainly do another video on those. But to keep it simple, there's three kinds. There's going to be a pink. Uh, there's typically what's called a, a white or a 22. And the last one is a black, which is the accordion style, also known as a 99. Um, all of these, by the way, are available on our website if you need them, if you don't have them, or if you'd like to stock them at your shop. Thanks again for watching our video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching.